In this video, we're going to learn how to make a steam locomotive engine sound. And I say we because this is my first attempt at making a steam locomotive engine sound, so I will be learning this along with you guys. Before we get started, here's a little bit of history. In the olden days, if you wanted to make a steam locomotive for the older versions of trains, you technically couldn't. You could only make a diesel locomotive that looked like a steam locomotive and that's basically what this is. It uses a diesel engine sound that has steam locomotive sound effects instead of diesel engine sound effects. The acceleration and deceleration sounds are just the sounds of it switching between notches. The obvious problem with this is that it's possible for the chuff sounds to not match the speed of the wheels, especially if the AI is taking control. From a standstill, it'll often go through all the notches at once, which will result in it chuffing at 80 miles per hour, despite only going 10 miles per hour, for example. We'll see that in greater detail further into the video. This is the engine sound in question. It has the same setup as a diesel engine sound. I don't think the start and stop sounds are still used by the game scripting. In fact, I don't think those sound effects have been used since Trains 2004. We're actually going to use these idle sound effects to make the individual chuffing sounds that we need for the new steam locomotive engine sound. We're not going to be using any of the up or down engine sounds because they're not needed for steam locomotive engine sounds. Some of these sound effects sound like they were reversed. We actually need more than eight idle sounds, but we can pitch shift the rest of them to get what we need. Oddly enough, the idle one sound sounds pretty much the same even in reverse. That's going to be used to make the piston stroke sounds. The rest can be used to make chuffing sounds. Luckily for us, the game automatically pitch shifts some of the sounds to make them merge with the other ones correctly, so that gives us only a few tasks that we'll have to do. Now, some changes will also have to be made to the locomotive and bogies for these sounds to work, and I'll explain that further in the video as well. So that we can have something to compare it to, we're going to use the original engine sounds for a while to give you an idea of what they sound like when in motion. I never liked that bell personally, but I do like the horn. Wow, this guy actually made an interior. I wonder if the controls work. I guess we'll find out soon enough. 
That's actually pretty cool though, because a lot of people that make steam locomotives for this game do not make custom cabs. Instead, they just use one that someone else already made. I can see why. Cabs take a long time to make and they're very complicated. Now you see what the problem is. The wheels are spinning at 80 miles per hour, but we haven't even gone 10 yet. I mean, technically that could happen if the wheels were slipping, but they don't appear to be. They're gripping the rails perfectly. Interesting fact, if you've ever owned Microsoft Train Simulator, you'll notice that these sound effects are actually the same ones used on the Flying Scotsman on that game. Man, even if you accelerate slowly, the chuffing still does not match the wheel animation perfectly. It does for a split second, but then as you pick up speed or decelerate, the wheels will go out of sync again. Apparently the gauges don't do anything, they're just pictures. Now, I've never made a steam locomotive engine sound before, as I've said earlier, so I'm going to look at a locomotive that already has one to see what has to be implemented to get this to work. Now, I'm going to briefly look at the config file of the CNJ GS3 to get an idea of how it's set up. At first, I'm looking for the engine sound that it uses. As you can see, the engine sound is quite different than one used on a diesel or electric locomotive. The local stationary fast sound effect is the sound that will play after the locomotive idles after one minute. 
the medium after two minutes and the slow after three minutes. Piston stroke one, two, three, and four are the initial chuffing sounds that you will hear as the locomotive starts to uh, accelerate. These will play after each quarter rotation or half rotation depending on what you put in the config file and we'll get to that shortly as well. This engine sound will play piston stroke one after the first quarter rotation. Then it'll play piston stroke two, piston stroke three, and piston stroke four. And it'll keep repeating those sounds and they will gradually pick up speed until the wheels reach 30 revolutions per minute. And then the 30 RPM sound will play. Smokestack hiss is the sound of the smoke coming out of the smokestack, just as its name implies. This sound you will usually hear right after you place the locomotive on the track and as it continues to idle. This sound pretty much always plays unless the locomotive is moving. Now, you need all the sound effects up to, I think, 100 RPM for this to work. So, you'll need a sound for it at 30 RPM, one at 35 RPM, one at 40 RPM, 50 RPM, 60 RPM, 75 RPM, 90 RPM, 100 RPM, and I think after 100 RPM you don't need any more, it'll just keep accelerating that one sound effect. However, it's better to have as many as possible, if you can get the rest of the sounds up to 300 RPM, even if you have to pitch shift the last one to make it sound like it's going faster. That's better than just uh, stopping at 100 RPM if you can. Now, as I said earlier, you'll need more than the eight idle sounds that came with the original engine sound that we're editing. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to all of these sound effects and then I'm going to use that to gauge what speed I have to pitch shift the other sound effects at to get them to sound exactly like this. Because all wheels basically will sound the same at the same RPM because they're still chuffing at the same rate. All you have to do is make it so that the timing matches this as close as possible. Now this engine sound doesn't have any special settings in it but there are certain things you can do to customize a steam engine sound which we'll get to later in the video. The first thing I gotta have to do is create a new object. And then view it in a new window. Now open it, show an explorer. The folder opens up and then you go into the config file to change it. Now under kind, obviously we're going to have to change unknown. We're going to change it to engine sound. Oh, it can't be capitalized. It's very case sensitive. It has to be one word and lowercase. Now what I'm going to do is add another line by pressing enter and I'm going to create a category class. I'm going to put it under ZS which is engine sound. Everything you type has to be in quotes pretty much except for numbers and everything you quote make sure you unquote it or else it'll become faulty. Category region is a list of countries that the object you're making should be used in. Separated by semicolons. US is for the United States, obviously. CA is for Canada. Technically, though, I probably should add UK since in Microsoft Train Simulator, this sound effect was used on a British locomotive. Ah, eh, who knows. Username is the name of the object which obviously has to be in quotes. For now, I'm just going to call it Steam Engine Sound Generic. Category Era is a list of decades that the object you're making was used in, with an S behind it, of course, and these are separated by semicolons as well. I'm just going to say 1940s and 1950s for now. 
after all, it's just generic. Author is the name of the person who's making the object, which of course is me. I'm going to put that in quotes as well. Contact website is the name of the website at which the author can be located and hopefully contacted. Assuming the website is even still up. I usually use the uh, I usually use my YouTube channel for that. Oh, I typed my email address in there by accident. There is one for email as well, contact email. And that's the email at which the author can be contacted. However, for really old content for this game, the contact email usually doesn't work because either their email is no longer active or they switched it. Or they're just no longer active and no longer use this game. So it can still be difficult to contact authors of older content with this method. If you plan on uploading your content to the download station, the train's build has to be at least 3.5. And you also need to have a thumbnail. I actually have some audio of locomotives that I've recorded idling in Phillipsburg, New Jersey, and I'm going to use that recording to make the local stationary fast, medium, and slow sounds. Now, I don't know if these sound effects would come from a Pennsylvania Railroad Class S1 in real life because I could not find any footage of it and have no idea what that locomotive sounds like. But like I said, these are just generic sound effects. Let's hope that they sound like the real locomotive that we're using them for. Now, you need to have a thumbnail, and I just added one, so now I'm going to create a thumbnails container. It needs to be, na it needs to be named Thumbnails. And then you need these brackets so that it can tell... Well, I'm not really sure how to explain this, because I'm not really that good at this myself. So I'm just going to create a container for the image. The image is going to be called picture.png. It has to be the same name as the picture that you put up there. Width is 512. And height is 344. And of course, for every bracket you create, you have to have a closing bracket at the end, or else it'll become faulty. Now I'm going to resize the picture. I'm not really sure if it matters that the picture is the same size as what you put down on the um, inside the bracket because it really doesn't seem to change anything if they don't match. But just in case, just in case it'll trigger an error in the future, make sure you have everything together the way it should be. Now, I'm going to use Audacity to make the local stationary fast, medium, and slow sounds. Now I'm going to uh, import the audio that I recorded of the locomotive idling in Phillipsburg, New Jersey. I'm looking for a section of audio that sounds great on repeat.
To play something on repeat, hold the shift button while clicking on the play button. Now, as far as I can tell, there is no limit to how long the stationary sounds can be, so you can basically make the file as long as you want it. However, the longer you make the files, the larger the engine sound is going to be when it's completed, so you have to keep that in mind as well. I get a lot of complaints about the engine sound I made for the Amtrak AEM-7, for example. That one has a lot of long engine sound files in it, and it is quite a large one. When you're convinced you have everything you need, highlight the section of sound that you want and then click Export Selected. Make sure you click Export Selected and not Export All because I've made that mistake before and accidentally exported the entire sound file, which was not what I wanted. Okay, I think I found what I need, so I'm going to export that, and I'm going to name it Local Stationary Slow. Now all I need is the fast sound, which will play after the locomotive idles for at least one minute. Now, you may be wondering, if I already have these sound effects, then why don't I just use the recording I have of this locomotive chuffing as well? The main problem that I have with those sounds is that I don't have any recordings of the wheels moving that don't also include the sound of the bell ringing, so that wouldn't really be plausible with the sounds that I have. Now, I'm going to copy and paste the uh, local stationary sounds that I just made. And paste them here. Now, you would think that changing the engine sound on a steam locomotive is as simple as just swapping one sound with another, but it's actually a lot more complicated than that. Since this steam locomotive is from an earlier version of the game, before steam locomotives were a separate object, and during a time when they treated them the same as diesels, there's a lot of changes that have to be made before you can even accept a steam locomotive sound. So even though I changed it to use my sound that I just made, which is incomplete at this time, 
it's still not going to play these sounds because it's, the game still thinks it's a diesel locomotive. A few things have to be done to the bogies and the locomotives to fix this, which we'll get to later because it's quite complicated. Well, not really that complicated, it's just there's a lot of steps involved with it. So right now, it's using the sound effect that I made, but it's not going to play them yet. Right now, I'm making the smokestack hiss sound effect, which pretty much performs the same task as the idle one sound effect on diesel and electric engine sounds. Usually when making a loop sound, reversing it on the other side makes it sound like it's not looping, but in this case it's too obvious because you can hear other sounds operating in reverse, so I can't do it that way. I'm just going to have to repeat the same file over and over again. So I have to find two points of the file that won't be that noticeable when they switch. I've actually downloaded a lot of steam locomotives that sound like that when they idle, so that's believable enough in my opinion. Alright, I'm going to export this as Smokestack Hiss. Now I'm going to edit this engine sound once more in order to copy the Smokestack Hiss sound effect. that I just got finished making. Now, since I still haven't made the necessary changes to the locomotive or the bogies, it's still not going to play any sound. Because right now the game's confused, trying to figure out why I'm trying to give a steam engine sound to a diesel locomotive. These are the sounds I'm going to use to make the piston stroke sounds. Like I said before, you got to listen to the original engine sound and then use your hearing to match the sound that you're making to that one as much as possible because the RPMs are going to be the same for each bogey. Idle 3 actually sounds like an almost exact match as far as the timing is concerned, so I might be able to use that with very minimum editing to get it the way I need it. So first I'm going to edit that in Audacity. Since this is already at the proper speed, I'm going to go ahead and export the whole thing as the 30 RPM sound effect with zero modifications needing to be made to it. I'm going to pitch shift the third chuff because on steam locomotives at least one out of four chuffs tends to be a slightly higher pitch than the rest of them. I'm going to export this chuff sound as piston stroke one. This one as Piston Stroke 2. This one as Piston Stroke 3.
I think you know where I'm going with this by now. This one will be named Piston Stroke 4. Now I'm going to copy the four piston stroke sounds and the steam loop 30 miles per hour, I mean 30 RPM, and paste them here. Now I have quite a few sounds, but still not quite enough to call this a steam engine sound. We still need several more RPM sounds for that. By the way, if it fails to submit changes to the to the asset, go to the folder that the error message was complaining about. It's one of these hash folders inside the local folder. And delete the .tzarc file that's related to the CUID number of the object you're trying to submit. Do not delete all of them because some of them might be important files that have to do with objects that you have downloaded onto the game. Only delete the one that's, that's related to the object you're trying to submit. See, don't do this. I accidentally deleted something that I purchased from KNL Trains and had to repurchase it because of this. It just occurred to me though that instead of repurchasing those steam locomotives, all I really had to do was go to the... Re uh, the recycle bin and restore the files that I accidentally deleted but um, I panicked and forgot that I had that option. Now you'll notice that it submitted way faster after deleting that file. I don't know why but that works so that's what I do whenever it fails to submit something. Right now I'm making some more idling sound effects, trying my best to match the ones that this guy created with the one that I'm pitch shifting. In Audacity, if you want to change the time that it takes for the file to complete without changing the pitch, you can choose Change Tempo, and you can actually manually select how long you want the sound to be in seconds. It looks like Idle 6 can be used for that sound without any modifications. Okay, so without any modifications, I'm going to export this audio as one of the RPM files. I'm going to call it Steam Loop 100 RPM. Now, this video is starting to get kind of long, so Obviously, I can't teach you the proper way to do this for every single sound you might have at your disposal. You're just going to have to use your imagination for some of them. Now I'm going to tell you what you have to do to the locomotive and bogies to get them to pl uh, play the sound. Here's what you have to do to the bogies. First, you have to edit them in Explorer. And then you have to add a new tag called Direct Drive. And for the bogies that drive the train, it has to be set to 1. And for the bogies that don't drive the train, such as the leading and trailing wheels, those have to be set to 0. So direct drive, set it to 1. For driving wheels, set it to 0. For non-driving wheels. And you have to do that for every bogey on a steam locomotive. You don't have to do that for the ones on the tender though. Now, I don't think the train's build matters unless you plan on uploading to the download station because all of the payware that I purchased from the N3V game store, the train's build for the steam locomotives are 2.9, so that doesn't seem to have too much of an effect. Uh, look at this, I failed to submit the edit again. 
Well, I know what to do now. First, I gotta go to the data drive that I have everything stored. Go to the hash folder that was referenced in the error and delete this file. And it should submit it right away. Oh, wow, look how fast it did that. If only I knew about this method several years ago. So, <laughs> Cause seriously, that error has been plaguing me for years ever since I bought this game. And even in previous installments of this game. But now I know how to fix it. The only thing you have to do to the locomotive is you have to give it a steam locomotive engine sound. Such as one that's built into trains to, uh, 2019 or one that you've purchased from the N3V game store. I use the engine spec from the T1 for this locomotive since they're very similar looking locomotives. You can also use one from the download station but it has to be specifically for steam locomotives and it can't be diesel. For example, this older engine spec that this locomotive came with that's pretty much a diesel locomotive engine spec will not work with this sound effect. Now, the locomotives I purchased didn't have these, but number of slow sounds, number of slow sounds, that is the amount of piston strokes that you have in your engine sound file. So I have four of those, so I set that to four. Number of cylinders, two. I'm not really sure what number of power strokes does, but I usually just set it to two because every one that I've seen so far has it set to two. This is one of the bogies that is not a drive wheel. I'm setting the direct drive to zero for that one. Now I'm editing the Pennsylvania Railroad S1 to use the engine spec that the T1 uses. This is a payware engine spec, but I can't think of any that others have made for high-speed steam locomotives, so that's the one I'm using for now. Now ever since the latest patch of this game, sometimes previewing the asset will instantly crash the game. This is because the object is faulty, but the screen didn't update, so it tried to load the faulty locomotive and it couldn't, so it just crashed. Sometimes the database has to be rebuilt after that, which is what it's doing right now. And of course, you can't do anything until it finishes. It looks like one of the bogies that I edited is faulty. This sometimes happens when you edit older content because it had a obsolete something in its uh, CUID file or something. Okay, this is the bogey in question. Why is it faulty? Required tag. Andam disk is missing as has been set to default. I could have sworn it was in there, but I may have accidentally deleted it. Alright, well this one's not faulty, so I'm just going to copy the Andam disk from this one and set it to... Uh, to the same number in the other one. It's four for this one. I think the anum disc is supposed to be the, the circumference of the wheel so that the game knows how fast the wheel should be moving based on how fast the train is going. Okay, so I'm gonna add, retype that. Anum disc four. That should fix the error and I should be able to use the train now. So I'm going to submit the faulty one, and I'm, let's see, is it still faulty? Oh no, it's not faulty, the screen just didn't update yet. Sometimes that happens. Should be able to use the train now because it's not showing any more errors. Alright, it appears now. If you have any missing sound files, then the engine sound will not play.
The wheel animation is a bit choppy and this is affecting the timing a little bit. Not too sure why the sounds stop when you do that, however, in AI mode, they didn't do that in another test, so it should work for that, at least. I'm still not sure what's causing that, though.
I'm still not sure why in DC Steam mode the sound effects fade as you slow down, but as I said before, in AI mode, I, I didn't have that problem, and I haven't tried it in cab mode yet, but it should be better than that as well. Anyway, that's the basics of how to make a steam locomotive engine sound for trains.